let's talk about some of the things that have been coming through my advice column for the last month. I haven't really had time to do all of these, uh, respond to all of these or even half of these letters that you guys sent in because, you know, I had kind of a, a I had a different focus during the February. I was doing more lectures than advice questions. There are some in there, but you know, now we're going to go back to our regularly scheduled programming. And what I try to do when you guys submit letters is because you know, a good 40, 50 letters come in every week, I try to pick the ones that I think will have the broadest appeal uh, that will respond to issues that the most people may be having and there are different age groups uh, different types of issues for each one so you know I try to mix it up a little bit so that I meet everybody's needs the, the young ladies you know the 25 and under I have a lot of those and then the 25 to about 35 35 to about 45 and then 45 and over um, so each age group, you know, each stage of life has different primary issues. So you see my letters are like all over the place. And uh, that I wanted to, you know, share that part with you so you understand my logic and why I respond to certain questions and not others. Also, um, you notice I have a slightly husky voice. That's a little emotional. Um, today was my mom's birthday. And it's the first birthday since I was born that I will be celebrating her birthday and she's not here to celebrate it with us. So, um, you know, I sound like I'm super sad or anything, but um, I just wanted to explain why I sound the way that I sound. So let's, you know, check it up. Come on, Deb. Um, I want to talk about some of these issues. I think there's four letters today that we're going to do. And believe me, I have dozens more. But, um, I'll get to as many of them as I can over the coming weeks. All right, so let's go with question number one. There's a lot of women here who come to the channel, even though we deal with single women, a lot of them were married before, so, but they're single now, so they, they fit our demographic. So this lady writes and she says, I've been divorced for almost two years. My ex-husband is going to get remarried to the woman he was cheating on me with this summer. I could care less, but he wants the kids to attend, which is fine. However, he springs on me that it's the last week in August and that they'll have to miss three days of school. I told him, no, that's a few weeks into the new school year and they need to be in attendance. He says, oh, they can just make it up. Now I have full custody of my two kids. He is just an every other weekend parent. He's not around to help with anything dealing with the kids. Now I have to inconvenience myself because he wants a late summer wedding. Who does that? By the time, by the way, he was and still is a very selfish man even after our divorce. I did everything in that tragedy of marriage for 15 years and he still wants me to bend over backwards. Hell no. What's your take on this? Since you're writing to me, I'm assuming that you have some conflict about it because otherwise you would have just told him hell no and that would have been the end of it. So there's something about this situation that you're not sure that you're making the correct decision and I want to reassure you that you are. No, you know one thing that I really been would, ha would have been very helpful is if you told me the age of the children because um, that really does matter as far as the curriculum and the expectations of them when they start school. But I can tell you from like, I don't know, fifth grade on, um, it, it's mandatory that your children be there when school starts. That is when all the, the uh, becoming acquainted with the new students, with the teacher learning the new students. Um, sometimes they set up testing that would take place a few weeks into the school year. So your children could very well miss, miss the testing because they'll be off you know, at this crazy wedding. Um, there are a lot of things to consider here and you won't know the answer to the school questions until a little bit later. They usually schools have a website and they'll put up what the activities are and things like that closer to maybe like July, June, something like that. And then the parents can look on the website and see, okay, the first day of school this, second day of school that, you know, they expect us to have this and that. When we come to school, they'll have like a list of supplies. I mean, all kinds of things. The parent-teacher conferences are the week that those will be scheduled. They have all this stuff usually on a website. But you, it's not going to be there quite yet. It's a little too early because you're still in this school year. So um, not only that, to add insult to injury, 
you got a divorce because of his cheating. Now he's getting married to the woman he cheated with and he wants to to kind of put you in a position where you have to accommodate him. Uh oh, my poor phone. I forgot about my phone. When I start talking, it thinks I'm asking it a question. No, I don't have an Apple phone, so it's not a Siri. I have an Android. Excuse you, Samsung. So, um, you know, he's he do this seriously on one. That's <laughs> that's what I'm I'm thinking here. Um, so no, you don't have to inconvenience yourself. No, you do not have to inconvenience your children. And no, your children are not going to be struggling to, quote, make anything up because he picked a fucked up date for his wedding. Now, if he really wanted his kids there, he should have called you. He should have been like, you know, we want to get married at, at sometime in the fall, you know, early fall, late summer, whatever, whatever the season is. And, you know, what day did the kids start school? So, you know, he could have moved his wedding up a week or two. It wouldn't have made a big deal. Or he could have moved it, you know, to next year. I mean, who gives a shit? But the bottom line is, he's he picked what was convenient for him, and he's trying to inconvenience you and your children. And the answer, the answer to that question is absolutely not. That is not going to happen. That's not going to happen. So you let him know that your children's education is the number one priority in their lives. They need to be at school every damn day that they're supposed to be there. And, you know, you can't just be having them missing three or four days of school. And what about in the fall if they get in the winter and they get sick? You know, they're going to miss more school. See, and you started off, you know, the school year when they should be doing all this establishing and everything. Like I said, um, they would be missing that, getting their books, all this kind of stuff. I mean, there's so much that happens the first couple of weeks of school. Um, the kids have to get, you know, establish a routine. There's just too much going on for them to just traipse off somewhere and go off to his wedding. And then are they supposed to be there by themselves with him and this woman? I mean, where are you going to be? You just sending your kids with him? I mean, what? I'm confused. So, you know, I would tell him, call him up and tell him that you thought about it and that you are not going to do that. Um, that there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If he wants the kids to be in attendance at his wedding, he needs to change the date. And that's it. The end. If that doesn't work for him, oh well. You know, they tell him the kids will see him when he gets back from his honeymoon or, or, or you know, whatever, whoever, whatever, whatever the fuck. I mean, you know, I want to say all kinds of things, but as you know, I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to be better. YouTube really wants me to not be so rambunctious with my language, so I'm trying my best to not do it so I can, you know, participate in more programs and everything, but mm-mm. This is a no-no, and you did exactly the right thing. Trust yourself. Anytime you have to do anything to protect your children uh, and to keep them on the straight and narrow, you did it. You do it, and you will always have my support. So this this thing here, you focus on the, the needs of your children, not on the needs of that knucklehead, okay? Question number two. I'm getting married soon. And my friends are throwing me a bridal shower. Oh, I really, really do not want to invite my sister-in-law, my oldest brother's wife, because she always comes across as so negative. My family's insisting that I invite her, but I know that I will be depressed if she's there. Should I suck it up and invite her or stand my ground? Thank you very much for your advice. Oh, poor little thing. And I know that's, you know, she must be really young so that um, her family is feeling like they have the right to dictate and tell her what to do now you this is an interesting dilemma because you know one thing I think that would have been helpful is if you told me who was paying for your wedding now we know they aren't paying for the bridal shower because you specify that your friends are okay so in you know but it becomes a, a little bit of a dance like for instance she will most likely have to come to the wedding, if, especially if they are contributing any funds to it. You will have to invite her to the wedding. However, if your friends are throwing you a bridal shower and your friends are paying for it, then you and your friends could tell everybody in your family to kiss your ass and that that bitch is not coming. That's all you have to say. She's not welcome. She's not coming. She's not going to fuck up my shower with her fucked up attitude. Oops. 
See, I forgot. I forgot that quick. Oh, I have to spank my own hand. But anyway, no, she's not coming. And um, your family needs to stop trying to bully you and tell them that. You know, stop trying to bully me to make me do what you want to do. If you want her at a bridal shower, then you have one. Okay, you have a bridal shower and then you invite her to yours. But she ain't coming to mine because these are my friends. These are precious people. I will only get to have one shower and I want it to be pleasant. I want to have a good time at my shower for my wedding. And if I know in advance that this is a person who would ruin that good time, why are you trying to shove her down my throat? It's like you care more about her, her feelings than you do mine. And it's my wedding and it's my shower and I'm your, I'm your daughter. I'm your sister, whatever. I mean, you know, she's just somebody who got married into the family and next week she could be married out of it. You know what I mean? People get divorced every day. So it's like, who, who, whose side are you on? Where's your loyalty? I'm your blood. You're supposed to be on my side. You need to check them because they all out of pocket. And cause they they confused about where they're supposed to be going and doing it, what they're supposed to be doing here. So you, I don't, you know, like I said, I, mean, I know you must be young because if you were older, you would tell them all to kiss your ass and, and if they don't like you not to come. See, that would be me. And even when I was like 18, 19, 20, I was still that way. And I cussed out my aunties. I, I was a terrible child. But, you know, the bottom thing, bottom line here, though, is this is your shit. This is you. This is your shit. And they don't have any right to dictate to you what, you know, you should do or who you to be in attendance at your event. And tell them if they don't like it, they cannot come. Because then that'll just make you have even more fun of a good time. But, um that you know you're gonna have to stand your ground I don't know maybe you and your fiance and your friends can can present this argument together um, I'm, I'm you know I'm not really sure how you're gonna work that but if you need backup you're gonna have to get it from you know from your circle right there but um, the bottom line is you stand your ground you tell them no and tell them and invite them to uninvite themselves if they have a problem with it that would be my suggestion okay let's go on to question number three you know, oh wait, let's before we go to question number three, I forgot there is one other solution that you could take if you want to be more diplomatic. Because you know me, I'm, I, that's not in my personality. But uh, what you could do, and I'm looking at this question, I just thought of another thing. What you could do is call her. You know, you could call her, and you could say, you know, in the past you've you've you know, you've demonstrated some rather negative behaviors and it has me concerned that you would um, come and do something like that amongst my at my shower in front of my friends and their parents and whatnot and um, it's so it concerned me that I really considered not inviting you but I want to ask you if you think you know because your family and I would like you to be there but if you think that this is a, you know you wouldn't might not be able to hold your tongue and you know behave in a polite manner to, towards these people and in a way that does not ruin the event and the occasion for me then I would like to ask you to not come and um, but if you think you can be you know you can be all right and we can have a good time together then I would love for you to be there now that's one way you could also do it I wouldn't bother though because she didn't already showed her ass obviously um, several different times for you to be this worried it didn't wasn't a one-time thing so I you know but I'm just saying if you you know want to do it that way you can I wouldn't but you're not me okay now we're gonna to go to question number three this is from a guy when did giving a woman a compliment turn into be thirsty he says is it not the rule of nature to like and desire the opposite sex I wanted a woman's opinion on what to at what point do you consider a compliment to fall into the thirsty category or do you just not know the difference see asshole he couldn't just ask the question he had to put a little shot in there so this is let you know what kind of nignog this is that we're dealing with so let's go let's talk about this okay when are you thirsty i remember making a i used to do these things on on uh facebook called um announce public announcements and it was like a little brief essay i would you know some some thought that i had and i had gotten up to like 1600 and something over because I had my Facebook account for centuries it seemed like so you know every couple of days I was writing one and uh, I got to yeah you know, I'm like 1640 or something before I stopped doing it but in one of them I talked about what a you know a thirsty dude the thirsty dudes on Facebook and 
I think, you know, I'm looking at him, and this really just irks my, this irks, as they say, irks my soul. This, do you just not know the difference? Motherfucker. Okay, but, okay, now let, me, let me start. Okay, when you go on social media, and you trolling all over people's pages, and you looking at their pictures, and you just commenting and liking stuff, and, you know, say, oh, hey, boo, you look fine, and this and that, to complete strangers on the internet, trying to holler at women on the internet your ass is thirsty as fuck okay you just just like parched and thirsty okay now let's talk about offline okay you know you walk up you see women walking up and down the street now they minding their own business going wherever it is they trying to go here you come they can't even you gonna block their path on the street or drive slow by they you know in your car try to roll the window down and trying to holler at the woman from your goddamn car what is wrong with you okay you know they don't know you I mean because you think that she's pretty uh, and you want to say something to her that does not obligate her to say anything back or even to acknowledge your existence but you know if you you insist on doing that that means that you're thirsty Okay, that is thirsty behavior. That's not gentlemanly behavior. It's not respectful, respectful behavior. That is the behavior of a thirsty nignog. That's what that is. Now, you also, because I've seen this happen, you know them dudes that have those pants that's low, so they have to walk, to walk with that little waddle. You know that little waddle they have, because if they move too fast, their pants will fall down. So they got the belt down there, and they do that little duck walk like that. Okay. They will try to run through a crowd, right, holding up their pants, doing that little shuffle walk they do, and because they want to catch up to some girl who's fine. So they busting through the crowd, through all these people, and they want to tell her that she's beautiful or, you know, she's fine or whatever you want to say to her. That means you're thirsty and you need to change your pants. That, that's what that means. Okay, it, these are, and then the guys who want to insist that, okay, like they try to holler at a woman, right? And she expresses disinterest. She's like, you don't know, thank you. I, you know, I have a man. I, you know, whatever she says to you. But basically, it's like I'm not going to participate in any more of this kind of discussion. But you have no interest in what you're talking about. Okay. But then you, well, you, you that's not good enough, Jake. You, you want to start pressing. Oh, but I'm a nice man. You know, I'm a cool brother. You know, I, I, I you know, I got a good job. You know, I treat my ladies nice. Okay. She already told you no. Okay, she's not interested in you. You, you're ugly, you're stupid, you're short, you're fat, you smell. Or she's married, she's got a boyfriend, uh, just had a baby. She's up with her baby daddy. She's not thinking about no other man. I mean, whatever's her reason, she's not interested in what you're talking about. Okay, but instead of you accepting that, you want to keep, you know, hounding her and telling her that what she ought to do would like give you a chance. Thirst thirst to the extreme okay and it's like it's just so disgusting I'm pretty sure that you don't think that when you act like that 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 is exciting to women and it makes them just you know fall over with lust or excitement about you it makes her roll her eyes and just be disgusted with you but yet you guys persist in this behavior and then you had a nerve to get upset when a woman tells you know tells you no and she don't want to be bothered with you after you have bugged her half to death you just turn into a bugaboo and then she just wants to get away from you it's just unbelievable Okay, so if you keep calling, texting, you hound them on social media, you follow, you, you, you follow, you know, hanging out in front of her house, watching who goes in and out. You follow her down the street in your car, like I said earlier. You honking, and are you following her on foot? Not only would you be deemed a thirsty individual, you might also be deemed a stalker or a sociopath. Okay, because there's something wrong with you. You don't handle rejection well. And speaking of which, um, I am going to be, I'm still reading through the 300 responses. Oh my God, you guys. Um, 300 responses from women about men who don't take rejection well. And this kind of stuff here, like do you not know the difference? See, you're trying to determine what a woman accepts from you. You don't get to do that. She gets to do that. You throw, you spit your game and then she either takes the bait or she does not. But because she does not, it doesn't mean that she doesn't know that you're complimenting her. It means she doesn't want to be bothered with you. You're not interesting to her. She don't want you. Okay. So don't try to put it like she's something wrong with her. It's something wrong with you for her. keep persisting on pressing yourself into somebody's life that's already told you they don't want to be bothered. Now, so what's a compliment? Because he obviously don't seem to know. Wait. I need some of my, oh, wrong cup. That's old cold coffee. What is this? California wine. 
because you know my, my throat's getting dry. <coughs> okay, so what's a compliment? I made some notes. Okay, your wife, you know, comes downstairs, you, or your girlfriend, y'all going on a date. Okay, she sounds, she's all, all dollied up and everything, and you say, babe, you look beautiful. You are hot. I'm a lucky man. That's a compliment. You see your mom, you're going to take your mom to church for Easter or out to Mother's Day brunch or something. And she got a new suit. She got her big church hat on and everything. And you'd be like, look at that fly woman. That's my mama. She just fly. She fly she was when she was 32. That's a compliment. When you see your little daughter and she's, you know, going to do a recital or something and have she's going to do something at school and she has her little Mary Jane's and her little pantyhose and her little dress and she's got her little coat and she just looks as cute as a button and you tell her that I, that you're proud of her that there's nothing in this world that she can't do and that she's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen that's a compliment when you tell your little niece that you're happy that she you're her uncle and that you know she's going to be a great kid and she's going to be an even more wonderful adult woman and to always you know let you her know let you know if there's help that you can give her because she's already the smartest person that you know and you want to make sure that she's able to fully develop her potential and you'll always be there to help her do that okay that's not only a compliment that's providing support and encouragement okay now see the difference see the difference there a complete stranger you talking about her body um that's not a compliment that's i mean she already knows she looks good okay so you stating the obvious is like what i mean and it's like you're a stranger so whatever you say is, is irrelevant anyway yeah i mean how is that helping her how's that bringing anything positive to her life to people who know you and who are and matter to you you saying those kind of supportive encouraging things matters to them it makes a difference to them you saying that to a complete stranger she's like fuck you nigga i don't give a shit what you think what you feel what you want nothing get out of my face okay see that's not a compliment that's you trying to get something going with a complete stranger and she's not interested there's a big difference so you know i think it's important that men understand that when you you kind of, you know, try to pick up on a woman, especially on the street like that. You think that your attend interest is is always welcome and that it's, you know, something positive that women view it as something positive. Most of the time they don't. Um, what you have, you call a compliment, is basically wishful thinking on your part. You wishing and hoping that she reciprocates so you can get your dick wet. That's what you're thinking. But, you know, you... And then too many of you, when when the woman doesn't express interest, you you get all in your feelings, and then she becomes every kind of bitch and hoe and all that stuff. Whereas you were saying five minutes ago that you was complimenting her, now all of a sudden you're calling her name. See, that's why the women don't want to be bothered with you, and they don't want to talk to you. They don't even want that door to be open because y'all don't know how to act. Okay, that's what that is. But the bottom line is, you think about it. This this is my scribbly note the litmus test for your behavior whether the woman should view it as a compliment or whether she should know that you're just full of shit um, if you the behavior that you're exhibiting that you know that you're thinking about if someone did that to your mother your sister or your daughter would that be considered a compliment or would that be considered harassment if you imagine somebody talking to your mama like that and you get upset and you say, oh, hell no, I want to fight that nigga, blah, 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 okay? Then you don't speak that like that to someone else's daughter, sister, mother, cousin, you know, whatever. Don't, don't do that because whatever you put out there, you know, it comes back. Because if you think that's good enough to speak to other women, other men's daughters, mothers, and sisters, and wives and girlfriends and stuff then you shouldn't have nothing to say when people do it to yours so you know you got to conduct yourself in the world the way that you would want people to treat the women that are, are special and important to you if you have any doubts about that then keep your mouth closed okay now here's the next question this young lady says i don't know where to start but here it goes I am only a 15 year old girl and I'm not attracted to my race anymore. Oh. All my life since I was younger, I have been made fun of because of my dark skin tone and the way I act and talk. Hmm, I wonder how she acts and talks. 
Almost all of the black guys have been around a very stereotypical, ignorant, rude, etc. It's always seemed like the girls with the lighter complexion get treated better. My sisters have always been treated like gold by guys and strangers because their skin is light and they have long straight hair. Right now, I never want to date a black guy. It hurts me to feel this way, but I don't see black men the same anymore. I love my dad, my granddad, and my uncles, but I still have resentment toward all other men. I do find white guys attractive and I only want to date interracially. Should I try to give black guys a chance? All they've done to me is put me down and make me feel bad about myself. I know I'm young, but everything that's happened to me before has made me have a strong dislike for black men as a whole. Please help me. I don't want to dislike them anymore. I want to put the past behind me. I just don't know where to start. Wow, there's so much going on here. Okay, let me start with, with the number one thing. You're only 15. What you trying to date for? Put that down, okay? You need to concentrate on school and like developing yourself you know academically and like talent wise like with some kind of piano or something that could help you get into a good college you know because on your application they're going to look for things that you do like you know community involvement um your offices that you may have held in school or things that you've done out in the community uh, like volunteering as well as positions that you may have held in, in um, some different organizations or things like that. Concentrate on that kind of stuff. Leave men alone. There's nothing nothing here for you. In a video I did just a couple of weeks ago, I talked about, well, maybe it was last week, shoot, the time is getting mixed together, um, about the, the I, this is my opinion now from what I've seen, that young girls really shouldn't be dating until they're about 17, 18 years old. You have to have the mental and emotional toughness and maturity to handle the stuff that's going to be coming at you in these relationships with these knuckleheads. At 15, you don't have it yet. So there's no reason for you to be trying to date. You're too young. Leave that alone. Okay, that, that's one thing. Now, the second thing, you know, the other thing is I don't know what part of the country you live in because I know in certain areas it's worse than others. Because um, like here, you know, I grew up in San Francisco. I never heard of any of this, this colorism nonsense until I went down to Texas. That's, that's when I heard, first experienced it. And I was like way older than you. And I was like, what? People talking about light skinned it and, you know, good eye, good hair and pretty eyes and all this kind of stuff and I was like what are they talking about I pretty eyes are eyes that you know just look pretty I mean some people have you know different shaped eyes and what but that's not what they meant and it was an education for me but I I discovered that you know all through the south because I did a lot of traveling along the southern parts of the states while I was down there in Houston you know to Louisiana Mississippi Alabama North and South Carolina Florida I mean that whole thing Georgia all the, through there and people have a different mentality than out here on the West Coast. There's a lot of emphasis on skin color and hair grade and all this kind of stuff. And the only thing that I could figure is it's a carryover from slavery. When the slave masters would, you know, would, would kind of categorize the slaves by, you know, it's a quadroon, it's a mulatto, it's a, a octoroon, and it, it, all this stuff would become some kind of designation of how much white blood or basically how much their ancestors got raped that's what that means so it's not anything um it's nothing good so i don't understand why black people hang on to that stuff so much to me that kind of mentality shows complete ignorance of your history and you know but yet so many of uh, you know still adopt it and and uh and you find you know glory in it or something i don't know it's just i'm just like man you you y'all got some problems you need some therapy or something and um, there also was the divisiveness of what they used to call the, the house ends and the field ends, okay? Now, even though it's not true about the house was all being light-skinned, but, you know, that's not true. But that was the, that was the, the association. So the light-skinned, quote, pretty people were in the house around the slave master which obviously, you know, just meant they had more opportunities for sexual assault than the ones out in the field um, who tended to be you know, out in the sun all day and, and they tended to be of a darker hue. They were not as ethnically uh, 
what's the term I'm trying to, but anyway they maybe you know didn't really have as much interaction with the, these white slave owners now I'm not gonna say that just because you know because you run into some people that are ignorant that's basically what they are now as far as you being attracted to white guys I'm not gonna tell you who to be attracted to what I'm gonna tell you is at 15 you don't understand what's going on here you think that a man's color is going to make him better and I'm gonna flatly tell you that <laughs> that ain't true I get letters from white chicks all day long pointing out the abusive behavior the cheating the lying the nasty snarky behavior the bisexuality the undercover DLism and all kind of other nonsense of white dudes so to me a dude is a dude you have to look at what kind of character he has his morals his values uh, family values and stuff and his values about women and how he treats and respects the female gender you know we also have a lot of these dudes now that, you know I want to say that they're that they're women they're trans and and that they are better women than real women and all this old stuff they want to call you all kind of labels so I mean there's so much going on in the white community I would not necessarily flatly say that that's going to be a better choice what I'm saying is you, you have to learn over the next couple of years how to select a man and how to eliminate those that are not going to be good for you. And I don't care. He could be green with pink polka dots. I don't care about his color. I'm concerned with what's going on in his heart and up here. Okay. And how he treats you. Those are the three top most important things. This matter. I don't care about that. Um, and I think I'm looking at this question seeing all the stuff going on in my mind um, I don't think you should waste your energy on hating on anybody you're too young for that you know keep an open mind because um, there are a lot of brothers that are very like Afrocentric thinking and they they only love black women and they have this darker the berry the sweeter the juice kind of mentality um, there, you know, but chances are wherever it is that you live in, where you keep running into these ignorant fools, you gonna have to move away from there. So, you know, you got college, uh, pick some, come out here to the West Coast and, and see what, you know, what happens different. This is very sad, but please don't take what they have to say as some kind of indictment of you. That has nothing to do with you. That's their own ignorance about their own race and their own history. That's just driving those comments. Okay. And stop trying to date. Don't be interested in nobody. Be interested in yourself and interested in what you got going on, setting yourself up for the future. That's where you should be concentrating your energies right now, okay? Leave Nig Nogs alone. And then the last question of today. This young lady is supposed to be moving out of, of her parents' home on May, or I'm sorry, on March 20th. Oh, I have the apartment and everything. So March 20th, that's just like a two or three weeks away. But the problem is that I have not told my father yet. You see, he and I do not have a good relationship, and I don't know how to break it to him. He always has a hot head about everything, and I'm scared that he may say something to me that may hurt my feelings, like he always does. I am 23 years old. My movie day is coming close, and I'm so scared to move. I mean, I haven't even begun to pack anything yet. Please help me and tell me what I should do. Hmm. Okay, God, you guys really throwing me some questions today. Oh, yes, yeah, see, my, my public enemy shirt I got on. I have so many t-shirts, but this is my PE shirt. Okay, I'm going to say this. If you could move out on a day when your daddy said work, <laughs> I would do that. Have your friends come and help you pack that morning, or if you have to, you know, pay for movers to do it, get your stuff. I mean, you only got, what, you got a room in your parents' house, right? You shouldn't have that much to pack up. So, um, you know, and anything that that he bought, leave his stuff there. That's going to be very important because you don't want to, like, he bought you a bed, a dresser, all that stuff. Everything that he bought that's in that room, leave it there. So don't even think about packing that up. So you probably don't even need movers. You just need a couple of suitcases, a trunk or whatever for your clothes and, you know, your personal possessions. But I'm telling you, really think hard. And anything that your father bought you, leave it at that house. You're going to have to go and get your own. Okay, that's going to eliminate a whole bunch of his drama. Because, you know, if he's acting stupid, then you want to leave all his shit there. Okay, but my thing is, I would tell him, you know, the morning that you're moving, 
you know, I'm 23 years old now, Dad. It's time for me to leave the nest. And, uh, you know, I'm ready. You know, I got a job. I got a place. I'm going to move. And um, you've, you and Mom have been great parents to me. You've given me all the tools that I need to become a successful and productive adult in this world. I want to thank you for, you know, all the sacrifices that you made on my behalf and all that you taught me. And um, I will go forth and make you proud. That's what I want to do. But it's time for me to move on and move out. Now, um, if he says that you can take something, you know, or he like gives it to you, oh, well, here, take this when you go. And he doesn't say it with a fucked up attitude now. Oh, well, take this too. Okay, see, that's, that's not, you want to do that, that you want to leave there. But if he says, well, you know, you might need this, you know, or, you know, just take it until you get your own or something along those lines, then you can take it. But I mean, just don't pack up any of his stuff just thinking that it's going to be okay. Don't do that. If he says anything that you think is insulting because you think, you know, he's going to hurt your feelings or something, I'm going to tell you this, though, okay? Nobody ever died from their feelings of being hurt. And if you're going to be out here in the world as an adult, you better get used to your feelings being hurt because that's what people do, okay? They, they hurt your feelings all day and all night just because they can sometimes. You're going to be working in a corporate America, your feelings are going to get hurt on the daily. So, you know, if you're going to be all sensitive about your daddy hurt your feelings then I have to tell you you need to suck it up and, be, and put your big girl jaws on because you about to hit it you about to hit it as an adult now move out in the world on your own and that's a daily thing of people you know saying something that you might find insulting demeaning or hurtful that's just how it is now the thing about it is um yeah so just hold your tongue you know just your goal right now is to get out of there Okay, you want to get out of there. So whatever he says is fine. Yes, Dad. Okay, Dad. You're right, Dad. I'm sorry, Dad. That's all you're going to say. You're not going to try to argue with him, disagree with him, nothing. Just listen to this, let what he says. Go in this ear and out this one. And then in between you say, okay, Dad. Yes, Dad. Right, Dad. Okay, Dad. That's it. That's all you say. So I want you on your own and you moved out. You don't ever have to see him again if you don't want to. You don't have to go over there. You don't have to invite him to your house. You don't have to go anywhere with him. Nothing. You don't even have to call his silly behind. Nothing. You don't have to do anything of the sort. Especially if he gets to you know, want, to, or want to argue and have a fight and stuff. See, now you can get up and go and get in your car or do your bus pass working or get an Uber or whatever and go back to your own house. Isn't that a nice feeling? That'll be such a wonderful feeling. And you don't have to, you know, invite him over to your place either because he'll most likely come in talking shit that you don't want to hear anyway. But um, that would be my suggestion to wait until the very po last possible minute to tell him um, that you're gone that you're leaving rather and then avoid as much of the drama as possible there's no need to tell him like now oh no need to tell him now weeks in advance so that you know he's gonna get himself all worked up and that you're gonna be like having a problem going home and he might be stupid well, since you leaving anyway just leave now just leave now don't come back here you know you don't want to risk any of that kind of stuff so that would be my suggestion for handling that wow these were some really heavy duty questions today um, luckily my brain is clear because sometimes, uh, you know, it's not. <laughs> and I struggle with coming up with an answer. But today my words flowed. I was very eloquent. My brain was working. It was lovely. I think it has to do with my hair. I'm channeling some kind of, you know, knowledge from the stars. But uh, this is good. I uh, will be back in a day or two. I think I'm going to try to keep up like a, maybe every other day schedule. I can't do every day, y'all. I just can't do that. It's just, just too much. I'm too old. I'm too, I'm too crazy. I'm too big. I have 900 excuses why I can't do that. But I can, I'm going to try to do every other day during this month. Okay, so continue sharing those links. Continue telling your friends. I'm still trying. We're like 200 people away from maybe 150, something like that, away from the 10,000 mark. I was trying to reach for February. We got real close, but I'm still pushing. So, you know, share links, any information on this channel that you think a friend of yours or a family member, a soror, a co-worker, or whatever, could use, get that link and send it to her. And uh, that's the only way that they're going to get the knowledge because very few people are talking openly about most of the topics that I address and have been addressing since the early 90s with no fear. And a lot of people are very afraid to talk about these things. Not me. All right. I will talk to you guys in a, what, two days. 
So uh, keep your, sending your questions in, survivingdating at gmail.com if you have some. I'll talk to you later. Deb Cooper, signing out.